five, four, three, two, one. Welcome. My name is Raj Basord. I'm a psychiatrist based in London. And today, I'm in conversation with Professor Michael Fitzgerald, who's a professor of child and adolescent psychiatry based in Ireland. Uh, Michael Fitzgerald has an interest in autism, Asperger's syndrome, and ADHD. And he's written several very interesting books on the links between Asperger's in particular and outstanding talent or genius. Um, Professor Fitzgerald, let's just start with these books that you've written. Can you tell us a bit about them and what your main thesis is about the impact of Asperger's on all our lives? Well, Asperger's has massive impact on all our lives. If we didn't have people with Asperger's syndrome, we'd still be in the cave. We would we would not have developed technology. We would have not developed the field, uh, fire or, or, or the wheel. That's the first point. The second point is that the genes, in my view, and there is other, other people in the same view, that give you Asperger's syndrome, the group of genes, a large group of genes that give you Asperger's syndrome, also have a tendency to give you creativity of extreme uh, proportions. So th there is an overlap between Asperger's syndrome and creativity. And this has been known for thousands of years. At least what has been known is the link between, you know, genius akin to madness, for example. So this kind of phenomenon has been observed as long as written records are there. What actually is Asperger's syndrome? Asperger's syndrome was developed by a man in, in, in Austria. Uh, he worked on it uh, throughout uh, the, the 1930s and he published on it, uh, well the first publication that it was in 1938 and later in, in 1944. It's a condition w w uh, characterized by uh, autistic features. And, and by that I mean they have people with Asperger's syndrome, they have poor eye contact, they have problems reading nonverbal behavior, they have problems reading faces, they have problems social know-how, they're naive and immature, they're, they're emotionally immature, they're loners, they have problem sharing, they have problems turn taking, they use repetitive language and they have narrow interests and repetitive, uh, repetitive behavior. And it's often then, not surprising then, it's often associated with depression and, and anxiety and in later life uh, uh, psychosis uh, isn't rare and the perfect example of that is Isaac Newton who was the greatest creator in the past thousand years who developed a psychotic episode in later life and he had all the features of classic Asperger's syndrome. Asperger's syndrome is meant to be part of this thing called autistic spectrum disorder or autism. Tell us a bit about what autism is. Well, these two, these two concepts overlap. We use the word autism colloquially when we're talking about people with low IQ, and we use the word Asperger's syndrome when we're talking about people with higher IQ. But, but, but the American Psychiatric Association, in their new classification system, DSM-5, have got rid of Asperger's syndrome, and now we have uh, only autism spectrum disorders and everybody has to be put into that category. This has been a tragedy for thousands of people throughout the world who have a diagnosis of Asperger's syndrome, who accept that, who are comfortable with it, who know the deficits that are associated with it and now at once, one stroke of the pen the Americans ha ha have wiped it from the planet and this, this, is, a, this is a most unfortunate uh, event but we're hoping that ICD-11 that's the International Classification of Diseases, uh, number 11, which is going to come out in about two years from the World Health Organization. We, we are hoping that they will keep Asperger's syndrome as they have it now in ICD-10. There may be someone listening to this, a parent of a child who's thinking, maybe my child has got Asperger's syndrome, or there may be an adult who's gone undiagnosed throughout their lives who's thinking, maybe I have Asperger's syndrome. What are the sort of things that you, as a, as a clinician and a diagnostician, observe when someone comes to visit you in the clinic that kind of really makes you think immediately, aha, this is someone with Asperger's? 
Well, uh, I did, this is, what you've just described is something that occurs to me every single week. I see people 40, 50, 60 who've been diagnosed with schizophrenia and they, 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 they doubt it and they ask the question, have they Asperger's syndrome? And it's very common to find that they have been misdiagnosed with schizophrenia when they have Asperger's syndrome. Now, the, 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 the diagnosis is, is seen in, in, from a distance in terms of nonverbal behavior. Like Alan Turing, when they come to the door, they, come into your, they tend to slide into your office. They sit at the chair the furthest from you. They don't look you in the eye. They're, they're, they're monosyllabic monosyllabic, they give you very poor uh, 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 in answers uh, to, to questions. Uh, so the, those are the kind of things. And when you look at their history, they have poor social relationships, they have marital breakdown. If they get married, often they, uh, they don't. Uh, but they, they, they have huge problems in, in work situations, in occupational situations. If they're heads of departments in universities, uh, they, 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 they cause endless trouble because they cannot uh, handle the social nuances in universities and in, in as being head of department. They they, where they, they, they function brilliantly as head of research and as research workers. And it's not Hello? 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 